We're in the kitchen today. Because I'm working from home. So, you know, sometimes I just have to be here. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano. Welcome back to my C++ series. Today we're gonna be talking about L values and R values. Sorry, this is just a zoom lens. I don't usually shoot on a zoom lens, but I am today, so I had to, uh, had to do that. This is gonna be the first video in a series of videos, which essentially is gonna be talking about some more advanced C++ features, including move semantics. I don't know if this will just cover move semantics because there's obviously a lot more that this information will help you with than just learning about basically move semantics, but it is definitely a huge prerequisite for that. If you don't know what an L value is, if you don't know what an R value is especially, then it's gonna be a little bit difficult for you to kind of understand how the more advanced C++ features such as move semantics work. This is definitely one of those things that is very difficult to just explain by waving my hands like I tend to do for most of my videos. So we're definitely gonna jump into some code and I'm gonna show you guys how this stuff works and what it is and more importantly, why you care. But first, I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you guys have not heard of Skillshare yet, then you clearly haven't been watching most of my videos. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of creatives and curious people all around the world come together to deepen an existing passion or hobby or learn something new. And unlike other kind of online communities, Skillshare is specifically curated to teach you something new. And with videos that are like super short, super easy to understand, super on point, it's a really efficient place for you to learn something new. I know that a lot of people are anxious with what's going on in the world right now. I know that I definitely am. And I think being creative and learning something is a really good way to kind of put your mind out of that and also deepen something that you might have always wanted to do. Skillshare have so many amazing classes that will teach you just so many things, photography, videography, how to start a YouTube channel and market that and start a successful business. I mean, seriously, they've even got classes on how you can like rearrange the furniture in your room to make it better. As I mentioned before, I particularly love their illustration classes because I think that artwork is something that's really hard to teach well. And I guess I just really enjoy the way that Skillshare manages to communicate all of those ideas across. And at less than $10 a month for an annual subscription, I think that it's a really useful asset to have in your library of learning and information. And Skillshare have been nice enough to offer the first 1000 people who sign up using my link in the description below, two months of free Skillshare premium. So especially if you're sitting at home now in this period, two months for free, try it out and see what new stuff you could learn. Huge thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring not just me, but other fellow YouTubers in this difficult time. I have to say, I really like working with companies who are actually nice and Skillshare is definitely one of them. Before we jump into some code and take a look at what L values and R values actually are, I just kind of want to explain to you roughly what they are and why it's important for you to kind of recognize what they are. And we're not just gonna be talking about L values and R values in this video, we're gonna also be touching L value references and R value references. These are kind of words, I guess, that a lot of C++ programmers hear, but they don't quite understand. And especially if you're new to the language, you might just get compiler errors saying words like L value, R value, must be an L value, must be a modifiable R value, non-const L value. And you might be like, okay, why is, why is the compiler giving me such cryptic language? Why can't this language be more straightforward? Language being C++, why can't it be more straightforward? Why do they have to have all these fancy words? And the words are only fancy if you don't know what they mean. If you know what the words mean, they kind of lose their fanciness and they actually make sense. And this video is hopefully gonna clear a lot of that up for you guys. Now, a lot of people call L values locator values because they have some kind of location as we'll see in a minute. But there are many different ways to kind of define L values and R values. And I don't think that you should stick to like trying to basically you know, find a definition for the letter L or the letter R. You just need to know what an L value is and an R value is. Don't try and kind of define it for yourself because I feel like that's a little bit of a trap. Okay, so let's start with a super simple definition of what an L value is and what an R value is. Suppose I have a variable, let's just call it I, we'll set it to 10. We have two parts to this expression. We have a left side and a right side. And this is also another good way to think about what an L value is and what an R value is. An L value is a lot of the times something that is on the left side of the equal sign. And then an R value is something that is on the right side of the equal sign. Now this does not always apply. So I'm not gonna like say that this is just a complete fact. Always think of it that way because it's not necessarily true. But in this case, it is. We have a variable called I, which is of course an actual variable with a location in memory. 
And then we have simply a value, just a numeric literal. It's just 10. It has no storage, it has no location until it is assigned to an L value, which is what I is. This makes sense because you can't assign something to an R value. So otherwise I can't say 10 equals I or something like that. That would be weird because 10 is not something that has a location. We can't store data in 10. However, this is an L value. Now, obviously we could just make another variable called A and set it equal to I. In this case, we're setting an L value equal to something that is also an L value, which is why I was saying that whole like right side of the equal sign doesn't always make sense. An R value doesn't just have to be a literal like this. It can also be the result of a function. Maybe we have a function called get value, which returns 10. And then we call this function here. Now in this case, get value returns an R value. It returns a temporary value. It's temporary because even though it does return an int, it has no location, it has no storage. It's just returning the value 10. But what we're doing here is taking that R value, that temporary value and storing it into an L value. Now, because this is an R value, if we try and assign something to that R value, it's not gonna work. This expression is not gonna work. Why? Because this is an R value. And you can see that our compiler is helping us. It's saying that expression must be a modifiable L value. Modifiable meaning it has to be non-const, an L value meaning it has to be an L value. However, this is where it gets interesting. If this was to return an L value, which we could do by returning an int reference, this is called an L value reference, then I would need to obviously provide some kind of storage for my value, maybe by using a static int like this and then returning it. If this is the case, since this is now an L value, it's returning an L value reference, I can assign to it and this expression works fine. So that's what an L value reference is. To expand on this a little bit, if I had a function that took in a value, maybe we'll call it set value. I can call this function a number of ways. I can call it with an L value or an R value. I'll set I back to 10 and then I'll call set value with that variable. So here I'm calling set value with an L value. And then here I'm calling set value with an R value. So this is a temporary value an R value. I keep repeating myself just so you guys really get the point here. So in this case, what will happen is this R value will be used to create an L value when the function is actually called. Now we can instantly see which one of these is temporary and which is not. Because another rule is that you cannot take an L value reference from an R value. So you can only have an L value reference of an L value. And we can easily check this if I stick an ampersand over here. So now I'm taking an int reference. This is an L value reference you can see that this immediately gives me an error. It says that the initial value of reference to non-const must be an L value. Now you've probably noticed so far that there's a lot of mention of like const, non-const, what's the deal here? Well, there's actually a special rule. And that is that whilst I can't have an L value reference of an R value, so in other words, I can't have something like this, if it's a const L value reference, I can. So if you write const here, you can see this works. This is just a special rule. It's kind of a little bit of a workaround. Realistically, what happens is that the compiler will probably create like a temporary variable with your actual storage and then assign it to that reference like that. So really it's just there not to kind of avoid creating an L value, but rather to just kind of support both R values and L values. Because what I can do here is make this now a const reference and you can see that it accepts both types of data. It accepts an L value and an R value because a const L value reference can in fact accept both of them. Okay, let's scratch this example and take a look at another one, this time using strings. I'll have a first name, which I'll set to my first name, and then I'll have a last name, which I will set to my last name. Then what I'll do is I'll create a third string, which is gonna be my full name. And I'll set this equal to first name plus last name, ignoring the space that I'm not adding between the two strings. So take a good look at this and try and identify what you think an L value is and what the R values are. So in this case, everything on the left side here is an L value and everything on the right side here is an R value. So in other words, this is an R value, this is an L value, this expression here is an R value. It's a temporary object. What happens is a temporary string gets constructed from these two and then it gets assigned into an L value. So with that same kind of rule in mind, if I had a function called print name, which took in an std string name here, and then let's just say we print it here. Then if I try and call this function print name with full name, it's gonna work fine. But if I try and call it with this expression that we had here, that's not going to work because it's an R value. 
which is why you'll see a lot of const references being written in C++ because as you can see, they're compatible with both temporaries, R values, and also actual kind of real existing variables, L values. So we clearly have a way to detect whether or not something is an actual L value. We can do that by just writing an L value reference that's non-const because an L value reference can only accept L values. This will not compile because this of course is an R value. Do we have a way to write a function that only accepts temporary objects? Yes. And for that, we need to use something called an R value reference. An R value reference looks the same as an L value reference, except we use two ampersands instead of one. So you can see what's happened here is the errors have switched now. We can't pass in an L value, but we can pass in an R value. And if we hover our mouse over here and look at the error message, it says an R value reference cannot be bound to an L value. So that makes sense. This is pretty cool because it means that we can actually write an overload of this function that accepts only temporary objects and one that accepts L values. And even if we make this const, meaning that it's also gonna be compatible with R values, this overload will still be chosen if it exists. So if we take a look at our code here, I might just write L value, and then I'll do the same thing over here, except I'll write R value. If we now call all of these, and I'll just do a little scene.get so the console doesn't close. You can see that the first overload that was chosen was the L value one, and then the second one was the R value one. So this is all really cool because with R value references, we now have a way to actually detect temporary values and do something special to them. So the question now might be, well, okay, but how is this useful? And the answer is, well, it's very useful, especially with move semantics, but that's gonna be a topic for another video. Basically, the main advantage here is to do with optimization. If we know that we're taking in a temporary object, then we don't have to worry about making sure that we keep it alive and making sure we keep it intact, making sure we copy it. We can simply steal the resources that might be attached to that specific object and use them somewhere else because we know that it's temporary. It's not going to exist for very long. Whereas if you take in something like this, then you can't, I mean, apart from the fact that it's const, you can't really steal anything from this name string because it might be used in a number of functions. Whereas this is clearly something that is temporary only going to be used with this particular call of print name. And that's where the power really comes from. So remember, L values are basically variables that have some kind of storage backing them. R values are temporary values. L value references can only take in L values unless they're const and R value references only take in these temporary R values. Anyway, I hope this video, sorry, I'm just playing with the paprika. I hope this video made sense for you guys. As I said, definitely one of those topics that a lot of people are very confused about. So hopefully this video helped to kind of clear the air a little bit as to what L values and R values are. As we kind of progress with this series and specifically this kind of some move semantics situation, it will definitely become a lot more clear as to why it's important to know if you're dealing with an R value reference and if you can in fact steal the resources from that temporary value because it is temporary. It really does help a lot with optimization and it's also very useful. It's very important information to know in general if you wanna know how C++ actually works and when you're kind of dealing with code like that because again, a lot of the time you might be looking through some code, you might see that double ampersand, that R value reference and you might be like, I have no idea what this means or why I care. But hopefully with this, you now know. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Also, don't forget to check out Skillshare. First thousand people who use my link in the description below get free access to two months of Skillshare Premium. Go and learn something new. I will see you next time. Goodbye.